Sam's mini review of the 508. I was a bit late to the party, so um, I'm going to do a quick one. Um, we were just looking at the front of the car to begin with, thinking, what a beautiful looking beast. It is stunning. Um, ben was mentioning that it's very much like the Onyx concept, and they've clearly taken some lines from that and brought them into the uh, daytime running lights, which they've tried to be different about, which is really nice. Um, bringing the, the lines down into the grille, it's just brought a beautiful shape to the front of the car and it looks quite different. I've spoken to loads of people about it, show them the pictures, everyone says, oh, it's the next Audi or Mercedes, and you're like, when you say it's a Peugeot, they don't really quite believe you. Until you see that badge, it's the only thing that really gives it away at all. The beautiful alloys on the side set it off really, really nicely. These black trim, round doors, running into the mirrors. Just a beautiful effect, really. Carrying through that beautiful roof line, same beautiful a lot. <laughs> but I think it's a beautiful car. The lines carry on round the back of the car. We've got, well, I think it looks very much like a Tesla Model S rear light cluster that blends in with the black. And again, you've got your black offsetting with the lower diffuser there. The beautiful soft lines continue through the boot and you've got this very BMW 6 Series-esque sculpture of a rear wing which sits in really nicely and it's quite subtle effect to begin with. Those beautiful lines that I keep mentioning, they carry on on the inside. Once you get inside, the interior is just really cosy and it wraps around you with the black headlining. You've got the fantastic focal sound system in the 508, coupled with the fantastic eye cockpit as well that Peugeot does. And a 10 inch infotainment screen 10 as well. infotainment screen. And actually at first I was like, oh, lots of switches. I like the switches. Don't know what they do, but actually very quick. They're very Lamborghini-esque, Very Lamborghini-esque, toggle type switches. And the sound system, well, it's difficult doing a car review with the sound system because if you're watching this on a computer with your tinny speakers it's not going to be amazing but so we may get done for copyright unless we use Ben Sound. Thank you Ben Sound. We've got Apple uh, CarPlay and you've also got Android Auto. Yeah Bluetooth connectivity as well just uh, if, you, if you're using more of a simple system but whichever way you do it the sound is fantastic with DAB radio um, satellite navigation. Sat nav, very simple to get to. You press the sat nav button, so. Plus, it's touch screen as well. These all make it very simple to find your way around the car. I'll turn the volume down because you probably can't hear me. <laughs> yeah, but we yeah. forgot about that when testing the music, actually. You can see we're down the end of a dead end road here uh, with footpaths. It's fantastic. We're down New Barnes Beach, mm -hmm. just outside Arnside. People walking past with dogs. Genuinely, Ben, blown away by the car. So I think it's fantastic. It's so smooth to drive. Yeah. Um, you know, you've got your different driving settings. If you want it to be a bit more sporty, it's all in your driving mode. What gets me is that gearbox. Like you mentioned before, it is seamless, isn't it? In every way, shape, or form, it is seamless. You put it in sport, and it becomes a completely different vehicle, doesn't it? It does. What uh, what size engine is it? One point six turbo. That's ridiculous. I yeah. I would have I would have said the way that it drove, the way it accelerated, the smoothness. Nothing under I'd two quite meter. happily said it was a V six. Right. I honestly, genuinely would have said <laughs> it hasn't got a V six sound. No, but well, the you can tell it's four cylinder, can't you? I used to have a V six, and I thought it was absolutely cracking. Yeah, they are. This screen, though. Oh, let's see if we can uh, press some buttons and make things happen on the screen. Right. Here we go. So, look at the way this this is this is not Peugeot level of stuff. The way it is can... now, though. When you've been in the five thousand and eight, the five thousand and eight has an eye cockpit as well. That's what's crazy about it. It is really premium level tech, isn't it? Yeah, and look, you can personalise everything. Yeah. Choose which dials you want. If you want to go for driving dials. And of course, if you set a destination on your sat nav, the whole thing can become your sat nav screen, and you're just left with your rev counter and your speedo yeah. on the sides there. With all those different driving modes as well, you can see that we've actually we'll get onto a long term trip. There's 29.7 miles to go, and a lot of stopping and starting, a lot of filming, putting the I was drone say, up. I've been trying to outrun a drone yeah. flat out. Uh, uh, well, flat a bit out, more long term, 30.6 miles to the gallon. Plus, you've got night vision. Which highlights things you won't even see. Yeah, not much use on a bright no. summer's autumnal day with barely a cloud in the sky. But we're not complaining about the weather. It's no. chilly, but 
It's amazing. This steering wheel as well. Ooh. Oh yeah. Look at that. This is the same flat top wheel. and flat bottom. Yeah, it's the same <laughs> in the 5008 as well, which is quite random considering it's an SUV. Yeah. And plenty of space as well. Yeah. Despite being a GT where you lose a lot of headroom in many cars, I was quite impressed that when you get to the back of the car. Well, a lot of the reviews do say. Well, we'll get in the back of the car. Room. I think if you were driving this not as a press car but an everyday car, you'd be comparable with a lot of diesel engines. Yeah, I reckon a minimum of say between 40 and 45, but if you go on an eco run, anything up to say 53, I would say. But you would have to drive economical. Yeah. If Definitely. you engage that 225 PS engine <laughs> in sport, then you are not getting 45 to the gallon. Not a chance. No. It's not a Lamborghini, but it does feel quick and it is encouraging to put your foot down to a degree. Well, the thing that staggers me, it's, it's limited to 155. Out of a 1.6. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, it's like Sam and I, Turbo's only up in an era, yeah. where a 1.6 engine gave you 115 brake horsepower. <laughs> Orion's it, of old. <laughs> exactly. That's what I mean. It absolutely staggers me. You get 225 out of that. You're comfortable in the back. You've been there a while now. Yeah, you haven't so got bad. out. Are you stuck? Considering, no, no, I'm, I'm <laughs> fine. This leg's a little higher, but it's going to be. Fully adjustable it? headrest in the back. Yep. Split folding seats. Do they fold? Do they do any folding? You actually have a ski hatch. Ooh. And a, for when I go to the And Alps. split folding as well. So you've got your ski hatch, cup holders, and you've got your split folding seats as well. Electric windows in the back stitching and it's finished exactly the same as the front and it's very comfortable and these seats well. are lovely look at that contrasting stitching on the leather heated leather might i add yes beautiful very warm needed that this morning with the frost well i was amazed at how fast the rear window defrosted that my verdict for the peugeot 508 gt this is a fantastic car if you're in the market for an executive premium saloon you should definitely consider coming to take a look at this car the Peugeot brand has come on leaps and bounds. Its refinement in recent years has just made this car an absolute dream to drive. That 1.6 engine is beautiful, it's refined, it's smooth. The gearbox it's coupled with is fantastic. Inside is such a fantastic place to be. The infotainment system, the massaged leather seats, the stitching that goes with it. I want this car, and that's not just saying that. I actually like this car. I'm not in the market for one at the minute because I can't afford one, but it's a car that I would certainly be looking at if I could afford it. It is well worth a look if you're in the market for an executive premium saloon. It ticks all of the boxes and you'd be convinced it was German, which I love my German cars and I was so impressed with finding Peugeot to be as high a quality as they are.